Good afternoon, viewers, and welcome to Futsal 868 Core Talks. My name is Geoffrey Edwards, series moderator and president of the Futsal Association of Trinidad and Tobago. Futsal 868 Corner Talks is an online meetup series where global sporting professionals share their experiences and perspectives on the fastest growing indoor sport in the world, futsal. However, in recent times and episodes, we have expanded to discuss topics of social issues and their relations to sport and in sport. Our main objective is to sensitize and educate sports stakeholders on the sport of futsal and other pressing local and global issues. Like physical health, everyone has mental health and needs to look after it. With our differences as a people, we experience a variety of thoughts and feelings as part of our normal life, with each dealing with said differently, based on temperamental, environmental, genetic, and physiological factors. Today, in episode 18, we look at the second of a two of a three-part series entitled Mental Health and Emotional Intelligence in Sport. In this episode, we focus on emotional intelligence. But yes, we would be going back a little bit to talk to mental health as well. Before we introduce our panel, let's take a quick look as regards to statistics, alarming statistics pertaining to mental health. To help us discuss this important topic of mental health and emotional intelligence, I have assembled my team of futsal players, my five, my Saturn five. Start with my goalkeeper, former professional football player, soccer warrior legend, and currently on-air talent football analyst and commentator for ESPN Inc., Mr. Shaka Hislop. Good day, Mr. Hislop. Good and yes, I will, call it, I will call it Shaka from henceforth. Don't worry. You, you, <laughs> I appreciate that. You, Thank you. <laughs> you deal with that. So in in the in the back line, I have Miss Amanda Johnson. She is at from the Sport Company. Good day, Amanda. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having me on the show again. Uh, along the other defender, we have Mr. Jelani Robertson. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having us. And my two strikers on top, <laughs> Dr. Nadine Sami. Hi. Dr. Good afternoon. Doc, I want to bring the one of the new in here. And <laughs> Alex, I have and the effort, you know, it just tied up right now. That's so. what we're saying. That's what we're saying. <laughs> and finishing up our lineup with the crowd going wild is is Alexandra Olton. Alexandra, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Geoffrey, for having me. <laughs> So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you all for joining us on Futsal 866 Corner Talks. Imagine we are 18 episodes in. Let's go straight into it. And to the to team sport, I would like you to recap, to give us your definition on what is mental health and why it's important in sport. Sure, I could jump on this one. Um, mental health is basically when we look at all the aspects of the emotional and physical well-being and how that contributes to sports and how basically you would cope with the different stresses that may come so basically what we look at is how you as an individual would cope and that contributes to your mental health and mental well-being um there are bigger contexts where we go into mental illness but which still contributes to your mental health but mental illness is on a bigger spectrum where you have diagnosable um illnesses that we can define anybody else anyone else 
I think Amanda summed it up quite well there. So. That, was, that was spot on. Yeah, no, okay. So then let's go to the next, the next component, emotional intelligence. And why, what is emotional intelligence? What is EI and why is it important in sports? I'll answer this one, uh, Geoffrey. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> emotional intelligence in the plainest sense is our ability to be aware of our own emotions, um, be aware of how our emotional reactions affect our thoughts, our behaviors, and then also our ability to read the emotions of others and as a result, uh, interpret how they might be feeling and then uh, directly impact our behaviors towards someone else. So it's the ability to read yourself and others around you uh, in the most um, or basic forms. So Doc, how does both of them, EI and mental health, uh, affect an athlete's performance? Oh, it's massively tied in. So I think I would have said it in the last show where I say that um, an athlete is a person first. So every single person has to consider their mental health. You have to think about your emotional well-being, um, you know, your thoughts, and because these directly affect your behaviors, your actions, how you interact with the world. So mental health is a huge part of it. Emotional intelligence is absolutely intertwined. And as Alex said, it, it affects you, it affects others, um, and then it, it has a direct impact on your, your thoughts, your actions, your behaviors. So it really is, is this core, um, core topic that then influences everything else. Shaka, with 15 years experience as a professional athlete um, in England and MLS, the highest level, what are your personal and professional sports and experiences when it comes to mental health and emotional intelligence? Well, first of all, they're both vitally important. And I think there's a broader discussion to be had, particularly around mental health, you know, and, and um, we, we I, I, as, as per series one of, of, of uh, th th this series, um, in speaking about mental health, I, I think there's still a, a stigmatism around uh, mental health issues, meaning mental illness and, and the worst, worst forms of it. But uh, mental health and, and uh, challenges to, to someone's um, to, to someone's mental health can come in, in any number of forms and, and put it in, in parallel to say our, our own daily health. It could be in the you know, form of a, of, a, of a headache or, or the common cold all the way through to, to, to more serious to more serious and, and uh, illnesses, which will uh, require hospitalization. Now, if we think around, if we think about uh, mental mental health in 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 that same kind of scope, um, you, you understand that that these challenges are real and and every day. Um, emotional intelligence, particularly as as it comes pertains to professional sport, I, I think is is vital. So whereas I, I think mental health is is more um, in my experience and, and my understanding of it is is about a. a you as as a person, as an athlete, um, and being in the in the best space to, to perform at your optimum, emotional intelligence is is important, particularly when it comes to team sports and understanding yeah. your role within a team, understanding um, other people's other people's roles, and if they are failing to fulfil those roles, what may cause that, and what can you as a teammate do? To, to make them better because ultimately in team sports it's it's a, a sum of the parts so the better each part is the better the team is and you have a you have a, a responsibility to the team in understanding um, somebody else's struggles next to you or why they're playing so well this week and what what we can do to to to, to make that more consistent and, and more reliable so those those are uh, in the two my own experiences or certainly my own interpretations but I, I hasten to add from the very top here Geoffrey I'm, I'm not an expert in, in this field this is just kind of my own understanding of, of the issues as it pertained to my career as, as, as an athlete and we totally appreciate that so definitely in, a, in the second segment we're going to look more into your career with specific questions as regards to how you dealt with mental health um, even your teammates who may have suffered with such and emotional intelligence to put you to the highest level. Uh, Jelani, um, when it comes to sport company and dealing with elite athletes, do you think that our athletes are emotionally intelligent as well as <laughs> mentally resilient? Ah, Alexandra, you see, I got it, eh? I got it. 
<laughs> We're very proud of you. I'm Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I think it, in terms of our local elite athletes, in terms of mental health and, and emotional well-being, um, and emotional intelligence, rather, I think that it's definitely a case-by-case -case basis. Um, it, it's very it's very tough uh, to, to just kind of paint a, with a broad brush, so to speak, um, about the general experiences. But from my experiences with my athletes, I definitely have some athletes uh, who, who are in tune with what's going on emotionally, you know, who, who can read emotions well, who can, who can express appropriate emotions at the right times as well. And, and you know, others who just need to work on it a little bit more. Uh, but I definitely think that there's, on the whole, there's a lot of room for growth, um, particularly when it comes to just being aware of how important it is and how really critical it can be uh, to performance and to well-being and mental health on the whole. So just from the research that we did, just being a little theoretical, uh, Daniel Goldman, the American psychologist who helped to popularize emotional intelligence, stated that there are five key elements to the topic. You all will know it. Self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. Mm -hmm. To team sport, why are these important to an athlete and which element or elements in a combination of do you consider the most important? I think that's a really um, loaded question, Jeffrey, just to say which is the most important element because each individual that comes to us is unique and how they display their skills really and truly is what impacts the total um, well-being and the total performance of them. So I would say a lot of what, and, I, and I'm sure the rest of the sports like team would agree with me, is that we work a lot on self-awareness. Um, that is one of the biggest components. If they're not aware, if they don't know how they react, if they don't know their triggers, if they don't know um, anything at all, you know, and how to express emotions, as Jelani rightly said, then how do we then move forward to be able to build a better athlete? So for me, if I really had to pick an answer to your question, I would say definitely having the self-awareness because that in itself influences the, the other four factors that you mentioned. Anyone else want to chime in on, on that? I, I, I will. And, and um, in, in uh, answer to, to, to the question, uh, direct question, um, I, I would say empathy and, and social skills. And of, of course, in the five, three, I believe, started off with, with you know self so that, that's about 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 you know the the individual athlete but you know in, in again in my interpretation of it um as pertains to, to team sports it's it's more important to understand what is going on around you in particular um in particular with with your teammates and in, in making making the the whole greater than the sum of its parts so you, you have to have empathy around um, but first of all, you have to you have to know and know what's going on um, as, as best you can with, with your teammates. Understand what may be affecting them uh, adversely. Um, empathize with that, and then your social skills is what determines how how you react to that and, and how you uh, either comfort or, or, or support them. And as as you know, cliches go, and and everybody speaks about in, in sports. You deal with players in, in different ways. You know, some players prefer, you know, uh, we will respond to, to, to criticism and, and harsh words. And um, why, whereas others, you know, need an arm around the shoulder and, and um, a, a, a softer approach. So you also have to understand how to how to get the best out of out of those people around you. And, and that for me is, is is where your social skills comes in, comes in, comes into play here. So, you know, my growing up, my mother always said empathy and sympathy are different. Mm. She always said that. And it's interesting to know that Goldman, he looked at empathy and not sympathy or both. Dr. Nadine, can you tell me why that is? Why, why is empathy more important than sympathy? Or why would he only use empathy as one of his five? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting question because sometimes we come across a, a word or a phrase or a topic and we don't really stop to think, okay, is this different from something else? How does this impact me? I would say one of the easiest ways to describe empathy is to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Um, and it was something I learned in high school from my parents, but also in high school. Um, I don't know if anybody read To Kill a Mockingbird. It was one of those books we had to, to learn in 
uh, to read for literature class in school. And um, in, in that book, one of the core messages was to try to understand other people. Um, it's very important to try to put yourself in their shoes because everybody thinks things differently. Our experiences are different. And I can go on and on, but we see the world through our own lens. And if we're able to try to, to think about what somebody else might be experiencing, perhaps we can understand where they are coming from. And then that builds, you know, bonding and trust and understanding. And then you're able to, to, to go from there. So it is hugely important um, to emotional intelligence. And also that contributes again to, to your mental well-being. Uh, Shaka, was mental health and emotional intelligence taught to you as a student athlete at CIC and or Howard University? And no. was, it, was it a part of the professional setup of your 15 year career whilst at England or the MLS? No, no, it wasn't. To, to either part of, of, of that question, Geoffrey, um, and, and understanding around around um, mental health and, and emotional intelligence, certainly as, as pertains to sport and as involved in sport, is is new. is, is a relatively new science. Um, and again, in in, in reflecting on, on what was said in part one of this series, um, I, I think the the um, interpretation understanding of it was, you know, if you had a, a sports psychologist. I, I, am I crazy? Was as as was one story I was told in in, in part one. Um, th those things um, uh, again are, are are new to to certainly professional football uh, and, and in particular England. Um, I, I heard of a few players doing it during my time, but it, it certainly wasn't widespread, and that was on on an individual on an individual basis uh, and i think it, it goes to the, the perception around around sport and and in particular the athlete you have to establish yourself as as an alpha uh and and any show of, of weakness re regardless of, of how real it is um so simply wasn't tolerated and then you, you had to present yourself as 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 being stronger than than you actually were and and um any sign of, of, of weakness was 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 jumped on and and, and ridiculed in, in in most instances whereas i think the understanding are, are around particularly mental health has has changed in, in that regard so the the sport itself is is more open to to professional um to uh, to professionals being involved in in that capacity so neither at school or or during my professional career was i um you know was i part of or, or were those made available to me but saying that Geoffrey and again not to not to age myself too much when I first started professionally <laughs> goalkeeping coaches weren't even a, a part of, of most professional um, club setups so we, we've come a long way in a, in a short time in in both those regards um so I want to go back to you Shaka and ask you the the question with, with that did it affect you or, or was mental health and emotional intelligence did that affect you off the field as much as on the field um also in from our research and even from part one we recognize that persons dealing with with with, with ending their career um professionally they didn't know what is it the, the what next you have made that 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 transition to something that you you love and you are quite good at um how did mental health and emotional intelligence affect you for that what next and even coming home off the pitch during your career well the the, the challenges in in both those circumstances uh be it during a player during, during my, my, my time as, as a professional and coming to the end are are, are very different and, and my approaches um my, my, my approaches certainly reflected reflected as much um the the toughest time i had uh mentally emotionally was probably at the end of, of my first year at at newcastle united um where as, as records would show and then we, we continue to talk about we had a sizable lead over manchester united coming into january of, of 96 the 95 96 season uh manchester united eventually pipped us to the premier league title we finished second that year but it was tough it, it, it was it was my first year in the premier league um and and it, it, it was it it was a tough time it was a tough time for me mentally uh but again it's, it's something you you dare not admit certainly at the time um just kind of given the the landscape of, of the game and as, as i mentioned before how you had to continually pre present yourself 
what changed things for me, and and I I always I, I say I can always put put down my kind of battle and and um, with, with 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 mental mental health to to a single day and August eighth, nineteen ninety six was, was the day that that my eldest daughter was born. Um, during the course of of the following season, uh, the ninety six ninety seven season, she she was seriously ill. Um, had had to spend time in hospital. It, it wasn't. Uh, well, she, she was very ill, not seriously ill. Um, and that put things in perspective for me. All of a sudden, what happened on the on the football pitch didn't matter. It was I, I was going from the training ground to the hospital, from St. James's Park on match day to the hospital to be with my wife and, and my young daughter, uh, um, uh, as I said, at, at the time. And that put things in perspective. And from then on in, what happened on the field never had the kind of the kind of emotional impact that that season did on me. This is it's never easy to to lose games. It's tough when you make mistakes, but um, I, I would walk through the door and my kids would be there. They would ask, "Dad, how was your game?" Well, regardless of whether I won or lost, their their reaction was the same. Oh, never mind, Dad. Come and draw a picture with me, and and that that put things in perspective for me. And so once I, I walked in the door uh, at home after games. Everything, every everything was just back to normal, and, and that for me was was the grounding I needed to make it to, to 15 years as, as as a professional. At the end of my career, it was it was a, a very different battle, and and that's a, a kind of long and oh, I found it a long and drawn out battle because as as you get older, of course you start things start to slow down. You can't do things uh, as well as as you once did. And every now and then you have this one day in training or this one game where you feel back to yourself, your performance is like when you were, were at your peak and you clung to that and, and whatever went into to that day, whether it was you had cornflakes for breakfast and all of a sudden you're having cornflakes every single day thinking that was the, <laughs> that was the, the, was the magic potion or you know, I, I had grilled chicken the night before, and so therefore you had grilled chicken the night before every single game, thinking that's that's it is what is going to keep you playing for for longer. Eventually, you realize, well, you know, the, no matter how much cornflakes and grilled chicken you, you eat, it's you know, time takes its toll, and and you have to make a, a very hard admission. You have to, you have to make as much as I remember. I, I, so I. I Played in, in uh, for FC Dallas my final year of my career, and I knew I knew that this was was my last contract, and I was going to retire at the end of this season. I was hampered pretty badly by by a back injury um, for some months before. So the MLS season was due to finish in, in in November. From probably about March or April, I started having some issues with my back. Eventually, um, the club asked me, you know, to, to retire early because given the, the setup in the MLS and salary caps and roster sizes, they wanted to bring somebody in. Um, so they needed to free up the roster spot. So I, I you know, after meeting with them over you know a couple of weeks, decided, yes, I, I would call it a day. Um, and that, that was tough. That, that After, you know, football was was my life and I, I'd lived. I'd lived my dream for some 15 years, and now all of a sudden, you know, I, I have to say no more um, uh, and, and call it a day. And, and, and that, that was that was really tough. But um, certainly at, at the time, my wife and I planned to plan to move back to, to Toronto and Tobago. I'd started doing interviews, um, one with with UTT about coming on their staff and, and involved uh, with them. Um, before before the the opportunity at ESPN uh, presented itself to me, the one thing I, I, I do say kind of softened um, the, the the fall in in planning for for what came after after football is that I had a university degree to fall back on. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew I knew I had that. Um, nobody could take that away from me. And even though I had graduated from from Howard University with, with a mechanical engineering degree, some some 15 years uh, previously, um, I still had it, you know, and I, I could still rely on that in some capacity. Maybe it might take a refresher course or something of the sort if I wanted to get back into engineering, but at least I, I had that foundation, which I, I also recognize not, not a lot of players have, and, and that would make their transition even tougher. 
That being said, it's not easy going from uh, playing at, at the top end of professional sport um, into working a nine to five, whatever that nine to five may be, for a number of different reasons. You've got a lot less time. Your your time is, is dictated by others. Um, your earning your your earnings have have, have um, shrunk considerably from when you, when you were playing and playing professionally. Um, so all these things that you 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 now have to manage, you now have to negotiate. Um, it's 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 a tough transition, regardless of, of how good those those foundations may be. Thank you very much for that. And we also want to say praise to God that your eldest daughter and all the entire family is doing well. Um, yeah, given that we all are. Thank you very much. It's, it's very important that we have to give God the praise for that challenging time and being there. Um, it's very interesting. There's a lot of things that you said there that really hit home, um, especially when it comes to the young persons who I hope are listening and watching, and which, goes, which gives us take a quick break to this video as we turn our attention after this after the break to leaders and athletes. You're looking at Futsal 868 Corner Talks. This is episode 18 as we look at mental health and emotional intelligence in sports. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Stankovich with this week's Sports Doc Minute. You know, a big concept in psychology is emotional intelligence. And where better to learn about emotional intelligence than youth sports? And so when I see kids at the practice, one of the things we talk about are all of the different skills that they learn in sports, both interpersonal skills and intrapersonal skills. Some of those things include learning how to communicate, learning how to be an effective team member, working on multitasking different things in their schedule, and balancing their life overall. We also call these athletic transferable skills. They are invaluable across settings. They work very well in the classroom, and they will also work in your child's future career one day. But the key is, as an adult, if you're a parent or a coach, is to sit down and talk overtly about these skills, because too many times kids assume that other kids who are not involved are learning the same skills, or they minimize the value of these skills. So make sure that you talk about the skills they're learning in sports, that emotional intelli intelligence that's developing, and help them parlay those skills into other areas of their life. Yes, you are seeing me having my water with my brand. It's, it's, it's water bottle. Yes, yes, I have to put in that plug. But it's interesting that that video, and welcome back, I should say, to Futsal 868 Corner Talks. It's interesting that that video spoke directly to what Shaka spoke about and to team sport. Can parents and coaches teach emotional intelligence? And if yes, what are the suggestive steps or techniques that they can take? Okay, um, well, I'll try to take this one, um, but firstly by saying, so one of the things that came up while we've been speaking is that, yes, emotional intelligence is critical for, for athletes, um, but also it's a huge, huge skill for coaches and, and support staff members and obviously for parents uh, to have. So, because we know that one of the ways kids learn best is, is through, through modeling, right? So through adults modeling the type of behaviors that they want to see because children at, at young ages definitely pick up things much quicker um, just by just by seeing people do you know the desired behaviors and stuff like that. Um, I think one of the first things that comes to mind in terms of trying to maybe teach children about emotional intelligence is just letting them know that it's okay to feel certain emotions. You know, there a lot of times there's a lot of taboo placed on, on whether there might be anger or frustration or sadness and guilt and these and, and, and the like of, uh, of these. But I think it's really, really critical uh, to just validate that these are perfectly fine, normal emotions uh, to have, not, not to shame them for having these. Uh, and then, you know, just try to get them to a place where they learn, okay, so yes, it's okay to have these things, but it's about, okay, is it an appropriate time to express it? And if it is, it is an appropriate way to express it. Um, and I think that, that that would be really, really, a really great place to start uh, when it comes to teaching and, and trying to cultivate emotional intelligence with our young people. So since it can be taught, should sporting organizations, including and especially at the grassroots level, have programs that develop emotional intelligence and adjust mental health? If yes, how do you advise that they go about it? Uh, so, Mans, I could just, I'll just offer a little brief and then you can take over. 
Um, so just speaking from my experience, uh, so right after my master's, I was extremely fortunate to have the opportunity to work in an academy football setup at Queen's Park Rangers. And one of the ways in which they try to cultivate emotional intelligence, you know, we had group sessions uh, with, we had a, they were fortunate, right? Because we had a, a small team of, of trainee sports sites, myself, two of my colleagues, and led by uh, the incredible Dr. Misha Javis. And we designed a program aimed a lot around resilience. Um, and and in, in that, a huge part of it was emotional awareness, emotional regulation, emotional intelligence. And so just being able to build these things into the academy setup, you know, coaches became accustomed to having us around, the kids became accustomed to having us around, uh, and these kind of things. And just being able to make it seamlessly integrate, I think is absolutely critical, you know, uh, and just not making it like, uh, a classroom set up, set up so much because then that becomes kind of schoolish and then kids don't really want to pay attention and and you know then it's kind of separate and aside from the football or the sport or whatever the case may be so I, I think trying to find a simple way a really good way of integrating it into sessions is key uh, and it definitely means though it definitely would take having the appropriate professionals around so Jelani I, I hear all that but let's look at Dada who has been coaching in the Queen's Park Savannah for decades and doing extremely well with children from the Portispin and Environs region. Let's look at Cox Coaching School from down south. Um, the Tobago Chicas, um, obviously, from our sister Isle. How do they now incorporate that and any other grassroots mom-pop organization throughout the Caribbean who will be looking at us how do they now get emotional intelligence and, and, and mental health programs into their 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 their, um, their 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 organizations? Noting that some of them might think, number one, it's expensive. Number two, where am I going to pay for a sports psychologist? What, where, where do we go from there? How do we suggest? Oh, oh, we're back to me, T team psych? No, 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 okay, okay. Just, 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 just wondering. <laughs> um, I think, again, that's a... A really great question because in addition to finances being an issue one of the problems that we have with sports psychology locally is resources the human capital and we are very 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 tiny um subset of, of sport professionals here you know uh, our one team is fortunate we have only we have four of maybe six or seven uh, sports psychology professionals in the country in our one team and so we know that one that's that's a that's a huge issue um and i think i think a good place to start would be similar to how you know you were able to do some research ahead of of our of of, of this chat you know just just being immersing yourself i guess a little bit into the information just getting comfortable speaking about the information uh, as well and just trying to make it applicable to your to your age group and, and your age range it's it sounds extremely challenging especially as a coach but i think uh, you would you could appreciate that as a coach should this or should I be successful in this then the, the reach that I can have with my athletes will be astronomical and and their and our performances will probably uh, may probably follow as well but more so than that you you'll be building some really quality uh, humans some really quality citizens so it, it definitely is worth uh, getting into some research and and then you know just trying to see if you can come up. Uh, through your networks to, to come across a professional that can maybe guide your your research even if you can't you know afford a full program that would probably be ideal so jelani from defense a beautiful through pass to striker ronaldinho <laughs> i needed to finish it off but before you score your goal as you guys are following up with jelani i want to take make a plug here to as regards to noting for those who are listening from a Trinidad and Tobago point of view, the University of the West Indies, uh, St. Augustine, as well as Cave Hill Campus, especially Cave Hill Campus, who do a lot of sports science, there's a lot of young individuals who are dedicated, who want to work and be involved in sports. I suggest that we set up some volunteering uh, positions to get these persons involved to be able to support your endeavors and be able to help accordingly every help everything every every situation helps every way it helps 
Um, I see that we have Mr. Hislop. He just he he went out. Um, let's see if it is he come back in. But continue the conversation, uh, Doc. You you let me let me hear you. I was actually just clapping for Jelani, but I do have something to add. Um, I think Jelani, you answered really well. Um, very comprehensive answer. I mean, even within our small unit, we have been aiming to to do more as time goes by. I rejoined the unit um, at the end of last year, and it was in the midst of a coaching workshop series. Um, I think that the, the site team had started and led. So we're trying to, even within our, our small team of EDPU, we're trying to reach out and, and do more than just, okay, we're having a one-on-one -on -one session with an elite athlete, you know? We're, we're trying to help coaches, for example. And hopefully that will grow over time. Um, I'd certainly like to encourage, as Jelani was saying, coaches definitely, and not just coaches, sport administrators, however, you know, players, go out and, and try and find out what there is. Um, come and, and talk to us at the unit. Well, maybe not come these days because of COVID. Call us, email us. Um, we're on social media, sport company. You could try to find us. Uh, let the, If you demand it, we will grow in response to that demand. Um, so, you know, talk to us at sport company, but also think about other ways that you could do it. Go if you're a local football coach. Go to your go to your MP. Say you know this is the program. Is there anybody you could direct me to? So keep researching, ask questions, um, come and ask us. We'll certainly help if we can. It might stimulate thought and and lead to something to something new. If we can't help, we might be able to direct you. So yeah, keep researching, keep asking questions, keep talking to people, and hopefully we'll grow and we'll be able to build something wonderful that helps athletes both on and off the pitch. Thank you very much, Doc. Um, I'm going to ask two questions to, to Shaka, given his limited time. Um, we have focused a lot on athletes in this episode so, thus far and episode one. There's, there's no secret as regards to what's happening when it comes to sport administration and sports leadership in Trinidad and Tobago and in the Caribbean. How important given the elements that we mentioned in terms of emotional intelligence, self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills, are these to, for, for, for our leaders, sport leaders, and sport um, administrators to develop, um, to be able to, 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 to lead? How important I, is it for us? I, I think it's absolutely vital. I, mean, I think what, you, what you're seeing or, or you're recognizing now in, in the most successful sporting teams is that um it's it it takes an organization and oftentimes uh, we as fans think think that it begins and ends when when 11 players walk on the field and uh and then they they walk off after the final final whistle but much much like a successful business um uh putting out putting out you know so, some product for, for for sale um you can you can have a a great product but if the company isn't isn't well run if um there, there isn't a great culture within within the organization that product could fail as good a product as as it may be it 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 won't be it won't be profitable the company itself won't, won't be successful and i think you're seeing that and, and you're recognizing that in 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 sport today and then particularly around sport teams that it takes more than just the 11 or the 20 players that it makes up in, in a squad it takes more than just a coach and, and, and his backroom staff but also at at the higher levels uh, within within boardrooms um within within many many of of, of the setups uh just to, to kind of uh relay that in in today's terms and, and um i think it's 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 still still very relevant um i for one and, and not to prompt any kind of any kind of an, an argument around this believe that the messi is is the best player on the planet today but oh lord I'm, oh not lord. Trying, I'm not trying to prompt a, i'm not trying to prompt a, a side discussion around this but my, my, my point is even if you take a, a player as talented as Lionel messi and you insert him into a team as talented a team as Barcelona may be, as Argentina may be, if the administrative structures around those teams, and they are awful in both those circumstances, if the administrative structures are around those teams aren't 
similar and, and, uh, and uh, built it in a way that can support the talent that, that those teams put out on the field, you get what we saw earlier this week in, in the Champions League, or you get what we saw from, from Argentina at, at the World Cup. Um, those things uh, are, are simply vital and, and I think underscored. I think it becomes even more important when you come from a country of one and a half million people and you have a smaller players pool than than everybody else and all and you you have to you have but yet you are have to all walk onto the same field with the same number with the same number of players and and expect to and expect to compete so where while we continue to to have our, our issues off the field administratively i don't think we'll ever hit the heights that we did, be it in 2006 or, or back in 1989, um, with, 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 any, with any kind of consistency. And, and I use that term consistency rather, rather loosely, recognizing that even then, it, it took 16 years in between each of our, each of our uh, nearly, uh, nearly qualifying, both, in, both for, for the 70 World Cup and then um, uh, for the 74 World Cup and then for coming close in, in, in 1990 and then eventually um, eventually uh, qualifying in 2006. So all of a sudden consistency for us is, is some 16 years in the making. And, and that in itself is, is a travesty in, in my opinion. Well, certainly um, Mr. Akil Andrews agrees with you saying yes. So <laughs> definitely I think that the people of Trinidad and Tobago um, agree with, with that. Um, and we definitely will be addressing that with, with the team sports after this question I have to, with, to you. Do you think, um, sorry, my apologies, as regards to your time uh, at the, as your time as regards to, in, as an advisory position, do you, is FIFA doing enough as regards to mental health and emotional intelligence in sport? Uh, I, I honestly can't speak to what FIFA are doing um, in, in relation to both of those issues. Uh, my involvement was was as as um, with the football advisory panel to to IFAB, which is around the laws of the game. So um, I, I wasn't involved in in any kind of capacity around what FIFA were doing. I do know that both the English uh, PFA, which uh, well uh, you're a lifetime member of, as as long as you you play football in. in in any of the English professional leagues, um, and I'm I'm also very close with with FIFRO, the the World Organization of Players Associations. They regularly send out um, send send out questionnaires um, that they ask all their members to fill out around mental health, um, I, I, and whether whether you want to to be a part of a, of a data set or whether you would prefer to have your answers. Um, uh, be anonymous, uh, and you can reach out to them for, for further resources. Uh, just kind of given the the broadness of, of, of their respective of their respective memberships, uh, I think they do a pretty good job. Given given the, the communications that I continue to receive from them, given the reports that they compile at, at the end of at the at end of those questionnaires, I, I think they do a, a very good job. But to, to your question, my involvement was was with IFA, which is FIFA related, but not um, not part of a FIFA setup in terms of uh, in terms of some of their inner work, is particularly around mental health and, and emotional intelligence. Thank you very much. We asked this question last week, and I want to trade out again to the team to team sport, given the fact that you know, as Shaka said, consistency we are lacking. How do we deal with prima donnas? So, secondary school football league, we have 17, 18 year olds. Who play for their schools, and 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 uh, they think that they are God's gift to football. They think that they are the next Messi. They think that they are the next Ronaldinho's. How do we deal with prima donnas, and how is the concept of prima donnas incorporated into mental health and emotional intelligence? Dofria, uh, go for this one. If that's all right. Oh man, go ahead, Alex. I'll jump in with you. <laughs> um, I have to say I'm a little bit irked by this question <laughs> because we're not looking at it, um, you know, you're looking at it from an individual level, right? So we are identifying um, 
or pinpointing certain players who demonstrate this level of overconfidence, uh, if that's what you're describing a prima donna as, right? They, they think they're God's gift to the secondary school league, right? So um, I think what we need to really take a step back, and sometimes this might be difficult, is that we have to look at it at a more global level. What is the culture of sport that we are promoting to our young athletes who are coming into this grand SSFL league? By no means I am not discrediting the league, but you know you, you're promoting sports max and the you know the the um, the games are live on sports max and they're recorded. You have crowds surrounding fields, um, you know, and these athletes feel as though they have become superstars overnight, especially when you're selected to play in these teams. And, you know, um, I have worked uh, with some of the SSFL school teams um, on a sports psychology level. And, you know, it's, it's impressive the environment that they create, but it's also um, this overconfidence is is being bred in the culture, in the coaches, and um, you know the parents. And my son is the best, or, or you know my my daughter's the best. And it's all about how we develop our culture of sport. If we develop a culture of sport that promotes excellence over success, and I know Amanda's probably smiling because she this is her favorite topic. Um, but if we we truly develop, you know, striving for excellence, and this comes right back to um, you know cultivating emotionally intelligent athletes. Emotional intelligence isn't just one topic that happens to feed into, into everything else. Emotional intelligence, for me at least as a, as a practitioner, is the core of everything. Um, it's, your, it's your grounding, um, effectively. It's your, your, your central compass as a human. Um, we get it from our faith. We get it from our you know, social conditioning. We get it from um, anywhere, really, that we are taught to manage emotions, deal with emotions and so on. And quite often these uh, quote unquote prima donna athletes, while they might be quite skillful or gifted um, in their technique, if um, you know they suddenly don't have the success that they once did or in any particular game they did not perform, you'd find that their resilience is not very high. And in fact, they peak and trough um, instead so that, you know, their confidence takes a huge hit because they then are not emotionally capable to deal with not being the best. And it's all about how we feed into it. And so, I mean, that's a huge question. Um, on an individual level, dealing with prima donnas is not really something that is necessary. It's more to deal with it on a global level and the culture of sport that we promote. And, you know, Shaka touched on it slightly when he said you have to come in and be an alpha. And I don't think we're very far from from that culture of sport that he is, you know, describing. We are moving in the right direction, but we are still, you know, eons away from where we I should would, um, be. <laughs> I, I would love to um, definitely add on to what Alex is saying, and she hit the um, nail on the head with that one. And also culture within even on a micro level. What is the coach feeding into the team? What is being said? I mean, is meritocracy taking place? Is it that once you perform, you are able to play? And then if you don't perform, do you get the bench or do you get an opportunity? I mean, I've had many athletes complain to me that a particular player consistently is not performing, but because of a name attached to something, um, they get to play. And that in itself definitely influences that prima donna attitude, which like Alex, I don't like that term either but it tends to influence it. So we could even look at it not as globally, but on a micro level and see what is it that the the actual technical team is promoting within and that culture within the teams. So that drives me to this question. It wasn't on, on my list, but I, I have to ask it. So do you think that we need to work with the league, SSFL, as well as the the um and the league being the, the organization that that hosts this league as well as the individual schools so should we do a mental health or a, a, an emotional intelligence caravan with these schools hmm, alex sounds familiar <laughs> i mean i would say yes and i mean to be honest uh, Joffrey, I think, you know, it comes, it starts with the administrators and the stakeholders, as we've been discussing previously, and, you know, uh, FIFA and uh, any governing body that provides coaching certifications, FIFA sort of works on a triangle, um, uh, coaching, 
philosophy and part of that triangle is um you know sports psychology so having a better understanding of 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 sports psychology emotional intelligence creating curriculums of emotional intelligence for coaches is not something beyond our reach as sports psychologists and certainly something i mean if you have a futsal it's six eight bus i'm sure we'll all jump on and create a caravan of mental health to, to go around but education is the key you you have to start with education there is no growth without knowledge and i could say this much to you the team is taking close notes because even our guests our international guests from last week have actually sent us emails saying that they want to work with futsal 868 in our let's play caravan where we go to secondary schools primary schools and we'll be doing communities um we're also looking to see if it is we have more online programs to be able to speak to and educate accordingly so i want to say thank you very much for that because we definitely have to do it educate 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 is very important yes zimbumba but we have to get out there and, and spread it a little more um we have some questions coming in um online i just want to take a, a couple of them so that and the, the, the so that we can speak to good day thanks for the excellent conversation for the panel when would be a better time to educate athletes about mental health and emotional intelligence? Now. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah. Um, let's go to the other one. Quickest, quickest. We go to the other one um, from the same individual. And how important is it for us to get our NGBs to educate the coaches under their remit to learn about these things? Oh, um, I, without a doubt, it's probably of uh, the most critical importance because coaches are the gatekeepers uh, to these young athletes. And if we can get these in this information and get the coaches grounded in this kind of education, uh, then the sky's the limit in terms of the reach of it, which is most important. So, uh, so as Alex said, if if that could happen now or <laughs> as early as yesterday, then then sure. Because I think it's, it's and of Alex, critical importance. The crowd is going wild right about now because they're saying that you have tackled the question perfectly. <laughs> so I want to say thank you very much, Mr. Charles. Another question from Damien Daniel. And it reads, if the prima donna mindset is a product of coach community influence, how can we effectively counter this if they continuously receive that affirmation? And I want to say to all those who are watching us both on our YouTube channel, and our Facebook page. Thank you very much. Keep the questions coming in. Keep the comments coming in. We'll try to answer as much as possible. So just to answer that question, team, even to you, even to you, Shaka. Uh, well, okay, well, I, I'm, um, I'm not sure I'm the, I'm the best person to answer this, but I, I, I question whether um, the reprieve another mindset is, is, is a product, well, necessarily of the coach. I, I kind of feel that it, it comes from other influences and no coach, wants or needs a prima donna on his team. Uh, I, I think at, at times that attitude comes from um, comes from endorsements closer closer to the player, be it be it family members, be it friends who, um, regardless of, of, of when they do something wrong, um, put, puts that blame on somebody else. You know, if you didn't score, it's because the pass wasn't right or, or whatever it, it may be. And, and I think every player, every successful player, has had somebody who, who has has been a grounding to them during 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 the entirety of, of, of their careers, from from a, a young boy or girl all the way through to, to whatever um, whatever that successful career may look like. Somebody who is uh, and can be honest with them um, and 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 point that out. But then again, that that speaks to uh, emotional intelligence of your support network um, in. In, in in maintaining that 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 balance for for the young and older player so if i was to ask this question do female athletes prioritize emotional well-being better than males i don't want to jump take into a, that question jeffrey i see you take a sip there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> before we even um jump into that question jeffrey can we expand on what shaka was saying because he is um definitely very right in saying if we look at it on a very humanistic perspective that there are many influences that come into play and i think that reinforces what was said a little earlier about the five components and what i thought was most important was that self-awareness factor because 
at some point you have to be able to see that A plus B is not C. And when you become aware of that, that's when maybe the prima donna mindset can shift or there's a shift in awareness on how people relate to me, um, how I interact with others. And that's why that self-awareness component is so important. And that's why, well, that's one of the first things we teach all the time as sports psychologists to be able to have athletes be more aware of their surroundings, their interactions, their reactions to things. So I would definitely, Shaka, that was a great answer. Um, and reinforcing <laughs> that for sure. We're just going to take a quick break, but we have to, in, in, during this break, we have to address as an organization, as the head of an organization, the team decided that we address what has been happening in Trinidad and Tobago is, is not necessarily mental health and emotional intelligence, but we have to address it because our tagline says stronger together. You're watching Futsal 868 Corner Talks, mental health and emotional intelligence in sport. We'll be right back. Yes, we at Futsal 868 stand against racism. And it's very important that we, I mean, Shaka, you have done it in England, being a founding member of Say No to Racism. I want to say thank you very much for, for standing up for us, with us. And we will continue to do our part here in Trinidad and Tobago through the brand Futsal 868 to say no to racism. And it's very important that we, I mean, just look at, just look at our panel today. Um, we are cosmopolitan people and we in Trent to be able to need to set an example that we are one. And I want to say thank you very much for this panel to, to, to showcase in that we are one as we speak about bettering our people through mental health and emotional intelligence. So running straight into it, and before I even continue, Shaka, how much time I have with you again? So let me just tell um, me. Probably another 20 or 25 minutes. Hey, hey look at him. Well, look at <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so let's go back into the, the, the another segment. Um, we go in, we, we, the, the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago has announced another lockdown. And I know that Team Sport would have done many series, um, well, an entire series, sorry, as regards to dealing with your mental health during COVID-19. Can Team Sport speak to that some more, please? I could go, sure. Um, basically, what we did earlier on was to put on a, a very short um, mini series videos to help athletes um, with what they can do during COVID. Now, I mean, we've passed the mark where um, things have, we've, we've been in lockdown, not in lockdown necessarily, but we have been restricted a lot. So I think to say maybe some have been finding their ways. I think where the shock is going to come in now is that we now have to close back down again. And I mean, something as simple as all gyms closing. I know the reaction in our EDPU group with our athletes has been like, they are like, please, no, they must find a way. They have to have some way to be able to keep this going because they don't know how they're going to deal going back into it. And I think this is where the resilience factor comes in on how you're going to be able to to bounce back from something like this and find your way into, I guess, adjusting to another norm again as this keeps happening. I don't know if anybody else wants to jump in and say. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd probably just add it because I know ooh, to try to, to try to just just cover what we what we covered for for months is uh, is a tall order. But I, I again, I think it just comes back to. Trying to encourage, as Amanda said, that resilient spirit. One, um, and trying to again encourage people to get control of the things that they can control. So we would always encourage you to just get back in a routine that you really think that you know is familiar to you, that is comfortable for you, and that puts you in a really good mental headspace, a space that you know you can be productive in. And just even if not, just be productive. Just be okay in, right? Um, it, it, it's really now just a matter of gaining back that control, which this pandemic and the necessary restrictions have definitely taken away from us uh so i would 
uh, again, just just reiterate how how critical uh, developing just simple routines could be, um, just to help you get that get back that sense of ownership over your life. So COVID nineteen has claimed another victim, secondary schools football league. So we have hundreds of boys and girls across the island who would not be able to don their shoes, their football boots, to hear the crowds cheer for them. Shaka, how would, what would you what would you say to these young boys and girls? Well, that that is is, is a real challenge, Joffy. I, I'll be honest with you. For, for for so many who who look forward to to the season, not just because. Um, not just in, in an effort to, to play the sport that, that they love, but so many also rely on, on the SSFL platform for, as I did, furthering, furthering education, be it through scholarship uh, or, or some other form of, of, of uh, you know, financial financial grant um, that, that, that may come. For, for, for those who, you know, maybe are using this platform to, to go on to, to play professionally, be it in Toronto, to be or elsewhere, given the fact that every league is, is affected, I, I don't think that is a, as, as impactful. But there are, are many. And, and see, I have a daughter who, who plays who plays soccer slash football here in the US. And that, of course, is, is a concern for her. She's um, graduated, she'll be graduating high school and well, hopefully in, in two years' time. So this every season is, is, is paramount to, to, to not just playing with her friends and her team, but, but to what what may come after. So that that is a challenge. And and what you say to them, Joffrey, to in, I, in an answer to, to your, your question is, I, I simply don't know. I, I think the challenge here for, for all of us is that we've not been here before. We've mm -hmm. not had to deal with this. There's no blueprint. There's um, no one was prepared or, or for this or, or saw this coming. So we, we're making this up uh, as we go along um, with, with with no instruction manual, and, and that's the challenge. For for what for what it is, and I keep saying to to my own kids here is there's there's a bigger picture to this that you have to come out the other side. I have friends who've lost family members because of COVID nineteen, um, and if you put that in into into that perspective, hopefully it 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 gets a little bit easier in in terms of in terms of how you cope with it, uh, as as tough as it may be. Um, there is a, a bigger picture to this. Is is that's well said. Um, to team sport, what would advice would you give to the parents whose child might? I mean, they are the one closest to the child, the parent to the guardian, and whose child may be crying or or emotionally distraught. What 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 advice would you give to them to deal with this? Uh, I'll tackle that one, Jeffrey. Uh, so I think the most important part, and I think what uh, Shaka sort of just said, is that there is no blueprint, so we have to sort of take it as it comes. Um, with respect to parents um, and their, their kids who would have been participating in various sports leagues, um, not just the SSFL, but, you know, across the board, I think parents have, you know, done remarkably well thus far because, of course, kids have been home since uh, maybe just before Carnival. So, um you know, parents uh, have probably figured out a routine by now in which they um, sort of engage with, with their kids. Uh, with respect to the sporting aspect of it, you know, there will be disappointment. There will be, you know, oh gosh, I wish I could have done that this year, or this was my last year, I'm in upper six now, and it was my last season, you know. So there is going to be quite a bit of disappointment from some. Um, some might just come to recognize, okay, well, better luck next year. It, it's sort of allow them to feel their emotions, express their emotions. Um, you know, create a safe space for them to talk it out or if they don't want to talk and they just want to be kind of sulky for a little bit, but then engage them in in, in things that, that might encourage them to, to, to still stay focused on something. So create a, an activity or routine, uh, you know, engage in, in other things that might entertain them during the time because, of course, um, realistically, schools were meant to open on the 1st of September and they're probably not going to open for the rest of the year. So now we have to uh, get them to want to go back onto online classes come the 1st of September. And, and, you know, then we have to 
find alternative ways to let them expel that physical energy. I mean, luckily, the, the you know green spaces are still accessible to us in very small groups, if not alone. So, you know, encourage the family uh, who live together to take a walk around the savannah or, you know, um, safely go on a small trail down Shagarama, so take a hike somewhere. Create new um, activities to fill the time that once would have been dedicated to something like the SSFL, which is a very concentrated league and um, very rigid in its training so um, you know it's just about creating uh, new things new activities as well as allowing them to express the way they, they ultimately feel about about the cancellation so so this was a question so, that I asked oh sorry go ahead Lani, of course oh I actually just wanted yeah. to just add a really small part to add to what amazing things that Alexandra absolutely is right in pointing out um, I think especially considering the topic of today and emotional intelligence I think a critical aspect for the parents is to be checking on themselves first as well, um, to, to ensure that they're in that space to be able to cope correct or adequately with the needs of their child, right? Uh, there's a saying that you can't give from an empty cup. Uh, and so if you yourself are not in that, that space to, to, to you know, cope with your own emotions, then you're not going to be in that great place to, to adequately assist your child or, or your partner, whoever it may be, to cope as well. So I definitely would encourage and implore uh, parents to just take that time to, to check in with themselves um, and their, their, their support, uh, whatever that may look like around them, to, to make sure that they're in a place in terms of coping with the lockdown and definitely try to see uh, how then they can best help uh, their, their children. Realistically, some of these parents are probably going to be more disappointed than the kids. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this question comes from our Canadian counterpart, uh, 17 years of age, who asks, would you be able to suggest online resources for me to work on and improve my emotional intelligence to become a better and more complete player? Um, just to speak generally, I would say that there are a lot of um, online, I want to say courses, maybe accredited through universities that you can take. Um, one of them is Coursera.org, and through there you can definitely probably um, search for emotional intelligence or something around that area, or mental health, there's one called psychological first aid, etc., just to get a little bit more base knowledge on it. Um, other sites like Udemy, I can't think of any others right now, but they're all very helpful in taking a accredited course that will give you a lot more information on specific topics, if that is helpful to answer the question. Anybody else want to make suggestions? Uh, just just quickly, I, I, I guess um, there are also some websites that we trust, and one of the things that we, uh, one that we turn to a lot is uh, Believe Perform. And they definitely have a lot of just digestible material uh, in relation to a lot of uh, very pertinent sports psychology topics and their uh, stuff around emotional intelligence. They have multiple articles written by by, by people with the, the credentials you want to be listening to, um, well researched, uh, well, well written, and and def definitely applicable. And uh, so definitely would would uh, recommend checking out Believe Perform. I believe it's not code or UK. Thank you very much for that, Joanie. And then um, I think they also have a Twitter account, which is very active, um, that same belief perform. Um, I think I've used psychology tools before. So one thing I wanted to, um, you know, we've been talking about articles and courses, which are excellent. Um, but also I sometimes like to use worksheets and sites like belief perform, like psychology tools. I think there's one called mind tools, but I'm, I'm not sure I'd have to, I'd have to Google it quickly. Um, but you actually get worksheets related to different topics, which are pretty amazing because if if all they do is stimulate thought or stimulate um, thinking around, you know, to look at something differently, let's say, that can be very helpful. So don't, don't necessarily find something and think, oh my gosh, I must live my life by this worksheet. Um, take around a pinch of salt, be critical, you know, talk to people, ask around, but definitely work, look for worksheets, they're out there. Just to add to the worksheets, actually, positivepsychology.com tends to have a lot of worksheets available um, for both practitioners and those just seeking knowledge as well. So um, you can use those. And then if you're the type um, who also uh, 
looks at YouTube videos and so on. There are a lot of um, emotional intelligence, intelligence videos out there on YouTube. Um, I know uh, Breen Brown speaks a lot on it and she's a wonderful resource to definitely tap into about empathy, um, emotional intelligence, self-awareness and so on. So th there's tons of research um, and stuff yeah. out there. Um, but like, as Nadine said, be very critical and don't just believe everything you read on the internet. So. You see that beautiful wall pass between the two strikers? Wow, amazing, <laughs> amazing stuff. So we're going to take a, a, a final break before we come back to have the closing remarks from all of our guests. You're watching Futsal 868 Corner Talks. This is episode 18 where we speak to mental health and emotional intelligence in sports. We'll be right back. Close it. Jerusalem, I call on me. Kilo no loze, uhambe na mi. Sumangi shila na, daunyami. Ali kola na, buso wa mi, au kola na. Kilo no loze. So for those who join us, this is Futsal 86 Eight Corner Talks, episode 18. Welcome back to our Facebook page viewers and our YouTube channel viewers. Thank you very much for joining us. It has been our utmost pleasure. All good things must come to an end. And we want to say thank you to our guests for, for coming on the panel. So we want to start uh, with the ladies first, your closing thoughts. Doc? Thank you. Um, I mean, it was today was very interesting. Um, as I said at the start, it's so it's always lovely having these kinds of talks with the team. This is our second time with you, Jeffrey. Um, absolutely an honor to to be on a panel with Shaka. Um, I think what's important to think about is start start at the foundation. You know, sometimes it's very easy to get overwhelmed. When we think about mental health, emotional intelligence, where do we start? It can be very overwhelming. Let's just take a deep breath, uh, go back to the start. Think about what you're feeling. Um, do you understand it? How do I how do I relate to others? Are there certain patterns of behavior? You could really break things down in a very systematic way. Um, you know, depend on others that you trust and have those kinds of conversations. Just start thinking about it. Start changing your language. Um, or thinking about your language around emotions and mental health. And hopefully from that foundation, from that base, we can really make amazing things happen. So thank you so much for having us. So I will pass on to another member of the team. I'm passing yes. the ball. Your striking your partner, Alexandra. Well, that's me. Okay. <laughs> Boo, we can back on. Okay, <laughs> um, I couldn't agree more with what Nadine said. And just to follow up on that, that, um, you know, when you're breaking it down to the very um, fine pieces that it can be, I think um, understanding emotional language, um, differentiating between feelings is important. And I think what I want to reinforce the most is that no longer should we promote a culture where not feeling 100% or feeling um, you know, slightly angered or sad or frustrated with certain things is something that we just have to kind of move past and bury away. You know, um, Certainly, it can be counterproductive or unproductive if you dwell on it for hours and hours and hours and then you, know, you don't show up to training sessions and this kind of thing. But you know, if you're experiencing an emotion, allow yourself to experience it. Don't try to get rid of it. It's not something you know, like a patch of mud on your shoulder that you have to wash off quick, quick, you know. It's, it's about experiencing the emotion, understanding how it's impacting you and taking the necessary steps to make yourself feel better or work towards um, a more productive, um, you know, performance or um, training session, whatever it might be. So it's, I think that acceptance, that feeling emotion is, is, is okay. Um, so that's certainly something that I want to promote. Amanda? Um, I would definitely say that we bank a lot on, you know, the intelligence quotient and we talk about IQ a lot, but I definitely think that EQ is definitely the new currency 
it's the way that you're going to be able to move forward, especially in this fast-paced world. And to echo what Alex is saying, a lot of when we experience unpleasant emotions, we tend to suppress them. And when we suppress them, we don't understand what it is trying to teach us. And a lot of the times, the emotions that we experience are tied into our value system and what it is that we value and what is not being met there. So I say definitely um, going off of what Alex is saying is when you do experience both good and unpleasant emotions to be able to definitely sit through this and a really important question and what I tell a lot of my athletes is to try to think what is this emotion trying to help tell me? What is it telling me about my life? What is it telling me about the interaction that has gone on? What is it telling me about that interaction? And when we can understand that a lot better is when we can start shaping things the future that we want a lot more. So again, don't run away from those emotions, whether they may be good or bad. It's something that we definitely have to experience and try to understand what is this trying to tell me and what is this value pointing towards? Thank you very much, Jilani. Uh, um, I mean, after the amazing ladies when there's really not much more for me to say. So I'm just gonna, just gonna reiterate what was said um, and just encourage, encourage everyone to really just get to know yourself. You know, um, get to know your triggers, get to know uh, what, what really pushes you, get to know what when you withdraw effort, uh, really get in touch with what's, as Amanda is trying to say, what's valuable to you and what's important to you. And that's the only way you're going to be able to manage those emotions appropriately by getting in touch with that, you know. Um, so definitely would encourage everyone just to, just to get to know yourself. And, and secondly, I really, really, again, encourage coaches, parents, um, those in support staff uh, positions to reach out, not only reach out to us physically or, or rather virtually because, you know, physical distancing and all that, um, but definitely go on the internet. Um, as Nadine was trying to say, be critical about your sources, of course, uh, but do the research and the things that you're interested in. There's so much out there um, on emotional intelligence and, and, and mental health uh, stuff. And if, you know, it, it's we wish everyone could have access to, the, the whole gamut of sports psychology services. We, we truly wish that could happen, but we, we you know, we, we have to be feasible as well with our limitations, but the internet so far, unlimited. And so I would definitely encourage uh, coaches to, to go out there, seek the information and, and you know, just see what you can build from there. And, and again, Jeff Duffrey, thanks so much for, for having us. Uh, and again, amazingly moderated and Shaka for your presence. So as uh, legendary Lincoln Phillips said, first line of attack, last line of defense. We pass it on to you, Shaka. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jeffrey, and and thank you very much for for having me. Um, it certainly has been an honor to be to, to to be on this panel. Every time I do one of these calls um, with with groups from Trinidad, I'm I'm always left amazed at at the wealth of talent and intellect that we have available to us on our shores. That I, I don't think we we recognize enough or, or give give enough credit too so thank you very much ladies and gent um for for your own contributions here today i, I, I feel like I've, I've i've come away a, a better person because of it um and, and, and summing up I, i'd just like to say that please take an, an for, for 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 those who who are, are watching um get get understand seek a, a better understanding around around mental health um, or a better acceptance around mental health and, and those challenges and, and the forms that it come in and, and how it affects our, our young men and, and women in, in today's world, and, uh, especially the world that, that we currently employ thanks to thanks to this pandemic, thanks to, to social media, which will outlast this pandemic, of course, which which also take, takes a toll on their emotional well-being. Um, emotional intelligence for me is, is, is something that um our individuals need to need to be aware of need to understand in developing their their own talents uh and and in pursuing their their own best selves but there's also a, a role and a responsibility for for those support structures around them uh the parents of, of our young men and women the the coaches and understanding and understanding the players and and their own their own challenges empathizing with, with what they they may may be going through those are those are rules um I, I i feel continue to be undervalued yet um will play will have the the biggest impact particularly as as it relates to to our sports and as i mentioned before 
coming from a, a country as small as ours with a players pool as as as, as small as ours. Uh, I think what we haven't had the time to, to address today, and as much as we, we've spoken about um, emotional at- intelligence, particularly around prima donnas, I think the other side of that same coin is, is equally true. We have an we have a, 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 a huge um, class of incredibly talented young boys and girls playing sport, every single sport, who maybe don't recognize their own talents or undervalue exactly how, how good they are. We as, as, as fans, we as, as parents, as, as, as supporters, as, as, as just some of these players' own groundings have to, have to be um, uh, aware of, of that as well and, uh, and, and play a, a role in them recognizing their own values, be it on the field or in, in our own communities. And, and that also speaks to, speaks to us as a country. I continue to believe that, that sport is the best vehicle to see some of the social change that we we always we always speak about that that we strive for that's why i was got involved uh as the as the founding patron of, of sure of the red card why i continue to serve as its as its honorary president sport is, is a vehicle that is more powerful um that, than I, I think even we as as athletes tend tend to recognize and, and we need to employ uh a whole lot more and a whole lot more effectively I want to say thank you very much for that, Shaka. So if I may, um, to the project coordinator of the Let's Play Futsal Caravan and the Futsal Association of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Aki Landjus. Big ESPN FC fan here. Thanks to Shaka for joining us on the Futsal X6 Corner Talks. And he says that on behalf of the entire team. And if I may be silly enough to have um, Jelani Shaka. I want to, I mean, come on, we got to do it, you know? A little razz, you know? <laughs> no, no. We no, no. no. We have to. We have to. We have to. We have to. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I am, I am, you and Jelani have to. <laughs> I, am, I, I read an article. I just recently read an article where you spoke about your best friend and how we help you through CIC. CIC is part of us. So let's do this, guys. Let's do this. We have the opportunity. I want to say thank you very much to Miss Dr. Nadine Sami, Alexandra Alton. Mr. Amanda Johnson, Jelani Robertson, and Shaka Hislop for joining us on mental health and emotional intelligence in sport. This is part two. Look out for part three next week. God's richest blessings to all of you and your families, and do have a great week ahead. We know that we're in a difficult time, but most importantly, my gift to you all is most put God first. He, he knows it all, and we must just continue to have faith that he will put to bring us through and uh, we continue to know that he would. So again, thank you again to all. Do have a great evening. Uh, Thank you. Thanks so much for having us. I've been watching Futsal. (laughs) Definitely. Thanks, everybody. Be blessed. Have a good one. Until next week.